Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on whichever part of the world you are. Welcome back to the third program in the series of IALD India's Lighting Saturdays 2020 events. I'm Anusha, and I have Kiran here with me. Both of us are members of IALD and run our independent lighting design practices, myself out of Bangalore and Kiran out of Mumbai. Both of us will be the hosts for this evening. IALD is the International Association of Lighting Designers, headquartered in Chicago. Last year was marked the 50th anniversary year of IALD. Under the leadership of Mr. Babu Shankar and Dr. Amardeep Dugar, IALD India chapter became a reality in 2015. Under IALD India, a number of hands-on lighting workshops were conducted in various colleges across the country. The workshop that was held in the month of February was the last one before the pandemic hit. Considering that everyone is stuck in their homes for the near future, Dr. Amadeep conceptualized a series of fun events to bring the lighting community together, have fun and share knowledge. With the help of ILD headquarters, Team Joe and Kelly, along with other ILD India members, including coordinators Nikhil and Tejas, these series of events are now a reality. Over to you, Kiran. Greetings, everyone. The first two events, the lighting bloopers and the lighting quiz, had an amazing response from all you guys. We thank each one of you on behalf of IALD and IALD India chapter for all the love and support. This week's IALD India event celebrates creativity through sketches. Sketching is an effective and, and a very efficient tool for communicating a multitude of design ideas while allowing for iterations before finalization. Every sketch is an idea, an invention, and conveys a different story. Where words fail, sketches speak. Since this is a lighting event, we shall discuss sketches within the purview of lighting design. Today, we take you on a creative journey where lighting professionals share their sketch creations from past projects and explain how effectively they were able to express their design thoughts uh, to the clients, to the co-consultants and the rest of the project team. The process of how a design thought evolves from a hand-drawn sketch progresses into a drawing, a detail, a computer visualization, and finally into a real project is what we hope the key takeaway from this session is. Needless to say, this is not to showcase the artistic prowess of the designers as sketchers, but only to stress upon how impactful the tool of sketching can be. We have 11 presenters today, and we look forward to sharing our work. Before the event starts, a couple of housekeeping instructions. For the entire event, the viewers shall be on mute. At the end of the presentation, there's going to be an online poll. We request you to please let us have your undivided attention during the presentation and your vote at the end of it with your three favorite presenters whose sketches resonated with you the most. Anusha, Hussein, and I will also be presenting our design sketches. However, we shall not be a part of the poll. With this, I would like to invite Anusha to start her presentation. <laughs> Next slide, please. Thank you, Kiran. Uh, I'm going to be presenting uh, a project uh, at the jewelry store in Bangalore called Zoya. Next slide, please, Joe. So uh, we put pen to paper and we kind of think along with the project during different progresses in the project. So here I'm actually going to showcase uh, like a sketchbook sketch to a, a proper sketch to more a detailed sketch as how the project evolved through a series of sketches. Now the image on the left, so this is a jewelry store. So I'm going to, uh, the, the whole design process evolved around how the visual merchandise was being lit and then the ambient lighting to make the store look good and the others were designed around it. So this presentation is gonna focus on the visual merchandise. On the left, both top and the bottom are my sketchbook sketches that sort of had a rough conceptualization of the three types of visual merchandise here. One is the flatbed, two is the wall niche, three are the plims, where all the artists and jewelry are gonna be displayed. And on the left top image is how I was going to attack the flatbed because that was the most difficult one because all the glass, clear glass and everything. And I had to really watch for angles and what kind of source was going to be used. 
So the first sketch I sort of thought aloud as it being a, a, a track uh, from which I would have a spot and I would try to hit it. So luckily this store has a, an existing one in another location where I had a live virtual merchandise where I could test it. So the second uh, middle image shows the markup images. So based on the first sketch, I did the first series of markup where I, uh, I understood that based on my calculation and X lumen output, the fixture ended up to be too big. And uh, aesthetic wise, I really didn't want that to be. I wanted to tuck it in into a very neat, clean profile and I really didn't like the idea. And there were two stored volumes, so nine foot and the 17 foot volume. So I did not want a big fixture. And uh, the lower bottom image uh, where I'm showing the niches, and uh, you know, I also had an initial idea of whether it could be a point source or a linear source, and I tested the same in the mock-up image as well, as to how each of these sources at an X lumen output or an X beam spread, how did they react to that kind of light, and which color temperature suited it. Then the right uh, sketch, uh, that's a more uh, a refined sketch that I presented during my concept presentation. And this, if you see, I have indicated a presence of a profile where I tuck in the sources. And the challenge was, how do I shrink the size? So then uh, on the right, you also see some extreme right shows the example images from the mockup. Next slide, please, Joe. So these are the completed project images along with more refined sketches uh, that sort of led me into the design, detailed design drawings. So if you see here, the idea of tucking the source into the profiles refined more where the taller volume of 17 feet had a suspended profile, the shorter volume of the nine feet had a recess profile. And to shrink the size to a three inches by three inches source, I tucked it, uh, I split the source into three. So X lumen output, X by three and three fixtures. And the idea of the magnetic profile has already been sketched here before I zeroed in on the spec. So uh, it can also be like sort of uh, made flexible uh, that you can add or remove fixtures as per the need of every module, module of the design. And the left bottom also shows the images of the wall niches and plinth as from which different directions I had to actually attack the target for the jewelry to appear brilliant. So this is the conceptualization. Over to you, Kira. Very nice, Anusha. Thank you. Really interesting how your first slide shows some quick hand sketches communicating your thoughts about uh, the positions and the orientations of light. While the second slide shows some well composed uh, technical sketches showing how you anticipate the light profile sections to deliver illumination. So uh, the one that's um, seen to the right, uh, to the image in the uh, to the right, with with the technical sketches, uh, were these meant to transcend into shop drawings for custom fixtures, like the one we see to the image uh, in the image to the right? Uh, correct, Kiran, and I think this minutest detail was really important for uh, me to sort of capture. And actually, I had to go out and look for a spec. So even before the spec was there, so I had just sort of roughly captured the intent here. And from this moment on, that idea was captured into like different, different profiles. So this one, the image that you see on the right is actually a custom made profile. This particular fixture did not have it in a curve profile, but I had to explain this was like a springing point and through other detailed sketches and detailed drawings, we had to transition this into a custom circular profile to into which these sources got tucked into. Thank you, Kiran. Interesting. Now over to you to uh, present your project, please. Next okay. slide, please. My turn, okay. Thanks, Anusha. Uh, next slide, please, Joe. Yes, for this event, I chose to share a sketch created for a project very dear to me, the Hanuman Temple in Dolby. Uh, the project is significant not only because of its genre, but also because it was way ahead of time. It was designed in the year 2011 when LEDs were still nascent um, to acquire a superior outdoor rated programmable uh, luminaires and see the Santum in different uh, nature inspired hues 
going between twilight blues to daylight whites to dusky embers made the project forward in time. The design of the temple conceived by the Italian architect was of a floating temple with a huge water body around the sanctum and the puja deck. Four um, hollow columns support a 30 meter by 30 meter roof with open space around it. Um, so we designers always look for that one special key element on a project that gives us a cue and a driving direction for our design. So for us, that element was the sanctum, uh, designed to depict the face of Lord Hanuman. The sanctum stands tall and punctures the roof through this opening in the slab. So after exploring various uh, lighting options, the, light, the one that really resonated us, with us the most was the layered lighting approach. The concept uh, entailed uh, positioning luminaires at various uh, locations and heights. So conveying the lighting concept to this clients was getting a little challenging because of which we decided, let's just sketch it out for them. Uh, that's the one shown um, to, the to the top right. So as shown in, this, um, in the sketch to the left, a few of them were aimed upwards to light the top of the sanctum, while the rest were aimed down to light the middle portion of, this, of the structure. Uh, the picture to the bottom right shows how we tackled um, the bottom, the base portion of the structure and made the, the sanctum appear floating. Um, so this positioning of luminaires and its aiming, uh, the direction of it came clear to the clients only after they had seen our sketch um, and they took immediate liking to it. Um, if I could have the next slide, please. So this next slide shows another idea that was well received by them. Uh, it shows the concept of a mashal, which essentially means a flaming torch. So determined not to use uh, run of the mill down lights in the ceilings, um, as the ceilings were adorned with uh, yantras and artwork of the deity, like you see in the picture to the top left. Um, we developed a floor mount custom torture to express the mashal that not only lit the artwork, uh, in the ceilings, but also lit the temple indirectly, creating a very calm, serene, glare-free environment. Uh, this solution too was easily explainable thanks to the hand sketches. Um, so yes, uh, here it is, the, the sketch techniques that were used by us, um, simple yet effective. Thanks, Kiran. I think as a fellow designer, I appreciate the fact that your sketch conveys the intent of lighting in terms of technique rather than the effect part of it where this the form modeling of this massive sanctum is is so beautifully done can you please elaborate on that thanks thanks so yes anusha the the goal was to convey the concept with a simple sketch and put forward our thoughts in terms of uh, like i said in terms of the locations and the direction of the light not so much to uh, overwhelm them with colors and so on. This this concept just came along, and you know the nature around us uh, inspired us. But at, at first, it was primarily to show them the uh, the direction of it. Later, we enhanced it digitally, and we brought in the colors to simulate the dawn to dusk uh, concept. So I hope I've answered your question. Thank you, Kiran. Anyway, with this, we introduce our first panelist um, and request um, Harshita, if you can request you to turn on your camera. Um, next slide, please. Harshita is a lighting designer out of Bangalore. Um, hi, Harshita, over to you. Next hi, Kiran. Uh, honestly, such, love, such a lovely project. I'm just so inspired uh, just before I start my presentation. Uh, Thank next you slide, very much. Uh, so to start off with, uh, for us, the whole idea for any project starts with a sketch. The sketch is a tool which we use a lot, especially in our practice to communicate. So the sketch you see here is a park with this beautiful bridge over it. It's a uh, U-shaped bridge. So the idea here for us was to celebrate the darkness, right? We didn't. We wanted people who enter this space to be able to see the stars, to be able to see the night sky. So the idea was to have lighting, but which is indirect, which is very subtle and soft. 
there is no way we could have conveyed this idea with autocad or with a cgi render you can see that there's a bridge and you can see the person standing there looking down there's no light which is on his face it's just a light along the edge of the bridge which provides light for navigation and then when he's on the bridge he looks at the water below and the uh, the soffit of the bridge is lit up so you get this beautiful uh, glow of light on the water so it's such a special a special feeling right when you see the, this you know floating arc in the water and then again we've tried to select a fitting which can has this really nice amber glow right so again we're trying to create this emotion this feeling of okay almost like a fireplace so it is so important for us to talk about the stars and talk about reflections talk about warm colors and uh, we felt like a sketch is the best way we could show this idea and which is what we've tried to depict here and i think this is what the client uh, likes and I, i always feel like a strong concept or a strong sketch keeps your design intact till the end because you know uh, the reason why a decision has been taken so why your specification is xyz so i think it always starts with a good sketch for us and so that's what we've tried to depict here uh, anusha and kiran nice uh, i see that uh, you have actually done a hand drawn sketch and modified it digitally and i see that beautifully you are able to capture that visual depth um uh, is you know was this your intent because the, the depth get, got captured very beautifully uh so um anusha uh, what we like to do is uh, firstly to do hand sketches because i feel the way the hand moves right you know these are imperfect lines firstly we want to tell the client okay this is not the final idea right things can change so always the beauty of your hand sketch is that it's not perfect right things can change it shows a uh, you know the, some areas are darker some are lighter so we always start with a hand sketch so i've taken a hand sketch and i've scanned it and then on top of that of course i'm going to use a digital media because you know like photoshop gives you this you know nice opportunity to you create glow to create highlight so i think it's creating best of both worlds right so you're using the hand medium to the best of its advantage and then you're using a digital medium to really convey a uh, lighting which maybe sometimes you cannot show with maybe pen and i mean maybe some people are really excellent at charcoal sketches but uh, you know otherwise i think a digitally uh, aided uh, sketch definitely uh, helps convey a lighting Yeah. Thank you Harshita. Next slide please. Yeah, sure. Okay, so this is a showroom that I worked on. So here actually my friend Amar has is as you can see is just walking around and trying to understand what have I done with the lighting. and you know he's just going around from one place to the other but uh, seriously like jokes aside uh, so this sketch uh, and you can see the image on the right is the final uh, the picture of the site right and i feel like the sketch before that explains so much more about the layering of light and so much more information that's gone right so you, when you see an image or a cgi image right you just see a flat image okay and you know you may never be able to understand what all has happened but for example if you follow the process right now the first layer that's a track light that goes on and you see that there is these defined pools of light and that's the main focus light then we have some up lights which illuminate the wall then we have a decorative light and then we have a light in the upper floor and then when he goes to the meeting room there's a diffuse source of light so what the aim here is to again we do not like to talk about the fitting in the first stage we just want to convey the idea and we and if you tell a if you tell a client okay it's a narrow beam down light what does a narrow beam down light look like what does it even mean so when you have a sketch and he sees that on a table there is a pool of light which is defined that is what a narrow beam means if you tell a client what does an up light mean what is it going to do to my wall that's what that's what we are trying to convey with this layering and when you say a barrel backlit ceiling why barrel backlit ceiling because it gives you this uniform diffuse source of light so what we try to do is to break the light into different elements and that can only be done in a sketch and which i was and i strongly i strongly believe that and again in this image you can see that again we try to what you see, like you said digitally i mean we draw it by hand and then we try to digitally morph it and make it uh, easier for us uh, uh, yeah yeah that's it yeah it's an absolutely uh, effective very simple sketching approach you have done here uh, in contrast to the other one this is very downright simple that effectively conveys the layering now uh, how did it uh, in, intend to help your communication to the, to the uh, client so or the project team 
So I think the correct word that you used already, Anusha, is layering. Uh, I think layering is something that we always do, right? There's never one source of light that we should use. I mean, we should always be able to control and use different sources of light. So I think uh, using sketching is when it helped me create different layers of light. So if, if we would have it in a presentation, we would have the sketches with some reference images as well. So I think um, that's how uh, sketching as a tool help us. And also uh, for us to understand it ourselves, right? Uh, that when we start off with, okay, we want we know you quickly do this okay i want to create this layer here and i want to create that layer here how does the it's it's a double height volume how does this level of light work with the lower level does it look okay so i think uh, the the potential of a sketch is to quickly be able to make all these uh, studies and understand how uh, things will work I, and i think that's what we've tried to do here nice. thank you harshita next slide please So the next slide, again, so this uh, is a, in the left side, you see a completed uh, photo of a project and in the right, you see a sketch. And if you ask me, I personally like the right sketch better because uh, the right image better, because I feel like that shows you the thought process. There's so much thought process that goes into creating one project, right? So when you go, uh, again, I didn't explain the context, I'm sorry. So this is a workplace. So the first thing that you, like anyone needs in a good workplace is glare free uniform lighting. And uh, so what we've tried to do is use, use diffuse linear elements of light. But instead of trying to use it in a very simple way, we've tried to make it more dynamic. And we've created these interesting profiles. And another thing, so you see all these notes that are scribbled along the sketch. It says, how do you conceal the AC? But the ceiling height is low. What do you do? So then you, we've created these semi-perforated panels, uh, conceal lights along that. So it looks dynamic. It conveys a little bit about the brand, but also it's giving you this very uniform source of light, which is glare-free. And again, you can see another comment is vertical illumination. Again, vertical illumination is so important for perception of space. So these are all, all the thoughts that go behind, you know, getting a final image, right? So a CGI render will never give you the thought process of the or the amount of depth of information that goes in but if you see the uh, the sketch we say that okay we want to achieve uniform lighting we want to have task lighting and you know these are the kind of uh, things that we're trying to break down here and so that's what we've done so even though it's messier i think i would uh, still say the right image is what i'll go for absolutely right i think uh, a, a sketchbook sketch right uh, a progression sketch is something that is irreplaceable. Thank you, Harshita, for the wonderful presentation. This is the time to transition to our next panelist, uh, Pranav. Next slide, please. Uh, Pranav is a lighting designer based in Ahmedabad, and the name of his studio is Zion Design. Over to you, Pranav. Please go ahead with your presentation. Next Hello, slide, everyone. please. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi, Pranav. Hi. Uh, OK, uh, the project which we are going to talk about, it's, it's a resort. Uh, it's a tropical gateway for uh, for local residents of Ahmedabad. This is where the resort is, and uh, for people uh, visiting the resort also. Uh, I mean, it, it's kind of a uh, I won't say a, a hideout, but it is in the outskirts of the city. Uh, so that's why you know, because of its landscape, you know, it has got a kind of Balinese kind of feel. Uh, the idea behind uh, the concept of of this pro project was. The client and the architect they wanted to give a Balinese feel to this project and we were in game for it uh, now uh, the sketch which you see on the image here it's a little smaller but obviously you know uh, I can explain that sketch uh, uh, that was uh, we uh, me architect and the client we were on an educational tour to Bali uh, obviously to buy a lot of stuff uh, for this resort uh, project and uh, uh, we went to a sculpture store uh, obviously I was kind of accompanying the architect uh, just visiting a sculpture store and uh, we came across this spot uh, which is obviously you know which uh, was quite uh, I was quite uh, uh, how, how, how would I say uh, I was quite interested uh, with the groove uh, which you see in the uh, right in the middle of the pot and uh, we had an idea that we wanted something, uh, some kind of sculpture right in the middle of the courtyard. The courtyard which you see here, where the pots are with the lights, uh, and obviously you know they have come to life in the image here. Uh, we we had conceived an idea that we wanted a sculpture with light uh, to give life to this central courtyard of this particular resort, because this this is kind of heart of the the whole property. Uh, when I saw this pot, and that's when you know. Uh, we took the dimensions of uh, the pot from the sculpture vendor 
uh, after taking the the dimensions you know we sketched it on site uh, we, uh, we requested uh, the vendor whether it is possible or not for for them to do it uh, and the final sketch was made uh, the pot uh, was prepared by them they sent us the images of the pot uh, and we were quite pleased uh, uh, if i go okay, can you go to the next image please Uh, uh, the project which uh, which which uh, which you see on your screen here it's called Sun Orbit. Uh, it, it, uh, this is a commercial complex and it's benchmark for uh, our firm as we successfully completed this bespoke facade. And the target for us was to deliver uh, within two months' time. Uh, so we had the whole sketch uh, from the architect. We had the 3D renders from the architecture firm. We we had all. Uh, uh, all the details which we wanted on the facade looking at the vertical element uh, on, on the facade and the length of the facade uh, something which kind of popped up uh, into uh, into my mind and whereas I thought that you know I want to kind of vertically uh, eliminate the facade instead of you know uh, instead of just touching the top of the crown uh, the idea here uh, was to kind of do an indirect light source uh, so we've created a bespoke uh, element on the facade in the grooves uh, which hides the linear fixture and it lit uh, the facade from uh, from inside uh, inside the groove so whatever you see in terms of the facade lighting the linear form all the linear forms are indirect lighting uh, on the top of the crown we've uh, we've uh, requested an architect to do a little tweak on the facade uh, for us to create a small section on top of the crown for us to mount the fixture which is not visible uh, for us to create an indirect light source uh, and that's why that's how the crown was kind of uh, uh, created and the vertical grooves on the facade was created nice interesting work Prana. Thank that's you. freehand sketches are very effective ideas and always kind of tell a story and you uh, you shared a beautiful story with us your trip to bali and you know, with the architect and how you kind of spotted this uh, planter pod and you in integrated the lighting within it. Um, for this next slide here, you've adopted a perspective sketch uh, technique that communicates uh, space, distance, scale, and even reinforces the verticality of this uh, structure despite being horizontal. Yeah. So uh, you used uh, two different techniques. Could you share your thoughts on um, the different techniques used? That was more like a product sketch, and this was, yeah. So please go ahead if you can elaborate, please. Uh, uh, now uh, we're talking about these two projects. Uh, the first project, which is a resort project, in which we obviously had, uh, it was not planned. Uh, so it was a spontaneous kind of uh, on-spot uh, sketch. Uh, whereas you know we visualized something while we were visiting uh, the particular place so it was not thought of uh, but we picked up a product and we thought this product could work, work as a lighting element for us uh, in the central courtyard uh, while uh, in context to the first one when you talk about the project which is on your screen right now uh, we had all the required drawings uh, and we had all the details which we wanted uh, so for us, uh, it was kind of, you know, th this is part of one of those five conceptual sketches which we presented to the client. Uh, so this is just one of them, which is which is a final image which you see. But obviously, you know, we worked on about four or five different concepts on it. Uh, whereas we, we worked on different layers uh, of lighting. And uh, I'm glad that this, this worked. Uh, this was one of my favorite too when we sketched it. Uh, and uh, I'm glad the client and the architect decided they want to go ahead and... Uh, uh, and and uh, kind of you know say yes to this concept and concept, it has come yeah. out really good i'm yeah it, it has come out really good i mean according to me you know i'm quite pleased the way it has come out great thank you prana beautifully answered we move on to our next presenter uh, swati uh, next slide please Swati has recently completed her master's in lighting design from a university in Milan, and she's going to be doing her internship in Netherlands soon. Uh, Swati, or to you, as the Hello, stage is Hello, Anisha. Hi. Yeah. 
Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, uh, so for me, the most important part for uh, sketching or anything is like to be having a strong concept and to have uh, some inspiration for the project. This project uh, site was actually located in Sweden, uh, Stockholm. So we were getting our inspirations uh, around that place and to have a coherence with the site. So uh, we were uh, inspired by the Northern Lights, which is uh, happening uh, in uh, Sweden. Uh, like we were kind of like we wanted to use that element as lighting in our project and uh, we were also inspired by the uh, curves of architect Alvar Alto's uh, waste the famous waste so we wanted to combine that both and make it into a sketch and bring that into our uh, uh, our space so our space this lighting is actually uh, uh, we are not going to sketch about the lighting effect. The sketch is about how this picture is going to be aesthetically intruding into the architecture of the space. So uh, this is about uh, the, the fixture itself. So we kind of uh, made uh, the most basic uh, sketch of the plan, like how we want the northern light uh, uh, the directions to be. And we wanted this uh, lighting to be directional for the people like how, when they are walking. So we made another uh, uh, orthographic projection. Like it's another small tip. When we are not able to draw any perspective, drawing an isometric view or an orthographic projection uh, makes a, makes our work easier. Like we get to see and visualize all the spaces. Like if there are six spaces, we can design lighting for all the six spaces. So we just made a small uh, orthographic projection for this uh, space and a small per perspective. So. Uh, on the right, you can see the uh, visualization of how the lighting has been transformed into uh, the, how northern light has been transformed into the space. So the fixture is actually uh, when we found the fixture, it was a horizontal fixture. So according to the sketch, we made the fixture into vertical plane. So it's going to give out a vertical uh, emission, uh, like, like a vertical element is the light. So that's what we used in the uh, sketches, which uh, like in the uh, dialogue views on the right. Yeah. So Thanks, Swati. I think uh, this is uh, this clearly explains, and it is beautifully thought out that uh, a natural phenomenon can influence a project, and. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, it's it's clearly evident that you actually based on your sketch intent you zeroed in on the specification uh, was that your intent yeah actually yes so we wanted to customize this fixture according to the sketch like we did not find any uh, lighting module which was vertically emitting light like so like here the effect of lighting which we were aiming was a uh, diffuse light so it was not much of a problem, but the fixture was not available. So we, we had to customize the, uh, the fixture like it was possible. So and then we used that thing in the project. Thank you, Swati. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, this slide, this type of sketching is actually, I would say it's like a technical sketch. It's not uh, uh, also an aesthetical sketch. The previous one, I would say it's an aesthetical sketch, but this one is to understand the fixtures and uh, the lighting, the effects of lighting more. So this project is actually a museum, a renovation project. It's a very old museum in Milan, and they want to use this space for multiple purposes, for fashion shows, for uh, Milan Design Week and stuff. So the lighting had to be more flexible. So for this project, um, we did not have men much of a freedom to in intrude anything in the interior because it's a historical structure. So we had to use the existing uh, holes and existing electrical points and existing fix uh, like uh, uh, things to make the new lighting for the project. It was all with halogen before lighting, and we completely changed it to LED lighting, uh, af like af for the project presentation. So for this project, if you see on the first sketch, it's for uh, a dome, lighting up the dome. So we had uh, only one point there, uh, one electrical point there, and we wanted to light up uh, the dome as well and also the floor. So we kind of made that single point into like two points. We fixed like uh, two fixtures in the single point and one would give up lighting to the dome and one would uh, give the lighting to the floor. And on the columns, we had uh, made a custom made ring fixture and custom made track to uh, give a vertical illumination to the columns to highlight the importance of the aesthetics of the column so 
so that that is the real, realistic render which we try to do in photoshop and the second view when we move on to the second view we could see a dotted line in the sketch it is the existing um, track system so this is the main important of the purpose of the sketch we want to show the difference what are we going to do so we kind of move that track below because now with our powerful leds we we can throw light more uh, like we have more capacity to uh, focus and uh, this proportion was right for us so we try to keep it with the column level so it is not going to intrude the visual aspects of the project so uh, the track is going to provide indirect lighting on the top for the walls like as you see you have like crisscross walls all over so the track is going to completely provide uh, indirect lighting throughout every wall you see and then there are spotlights Uh, attached to the track which are going to um, uh, point out to the book store there like uh, this is for an a solved situation like they can have a exhibition so how the spotlights are going to light up the exhibition and which light is going to point where so the number of fixtures when you go to the third uh, sketch you can see uh, we wanted to light the uh, uh, it, it, the reception desk it's the task area task lighting so we did not want again to uh, one more light to give. like it's a very high ceiling space already we are uh, suspending a uh, track and so for providing the task lighting we suspended a further more linear lighting for the desk to uh, give a uh, uniform task lighting also the track is uh, at, uh, at the same time giving the indirect light to the walls so you can see the sketch uh, like you can see the render like how the lighting is provided and how the fixture is actually camouflaging into the interiors like the light is not uh, being a disturbance or anything so on the the next sketch you can see uh, the general uh, scenario of the dramatic scenario like when there are no events happening how the lighting we want to be so when you see only the columns are going to be lit and the indirect lighting so only the walls the dome and the columns would be lit so th these are getting kind of more importance and these are more highlighted to uh, in give the more importance to the aesthetics of the place so yeah so this is more of a technical sketch thank you swati and uh, here, here uh, i can you please highlight what medium you used to sketch this um uh, yeah so i used a, a gateway sheet okay, something like this like uh, to do the sketches and i just used my micron pens with different uh, uh, thicknesses and i used uh, like color pencils for lighting and if suppose i want to change i scan this thing and then i do the lighting on photoshop so that we can uh, do multiple uh, what uh, like we can try it out like however it is yeah thank you swati very clearly made presentation uh, this is time to move on to our next panelist nirmit next slide please nirmit uh, is a lighting designer based out of ahmedabad and his studio is called atelier data and nirmit over to you next slide please okay yeah so uh, this one was a lighting master plan exercise for us uh, somewhere in 2012 uh, it was uh, to develop a connection between uh, one of the monuments in uh, the capital city of gujarat and the stage assembly so it was a long project uh, of 1.5 kilometers and uh, the tender and everything was done but we had to help architect to uh, enhance this idea so we started uh, so it was mostly a sketch project idea project and then we would start out with the with the drawing tender drawing so uh, we used various uh, sketch uh, techniques and mediums to uh, first uh, establish various strategies in terms of uh, Uh, the visual hierarchy in terms of color temperature uh, in terms of scale of the light uh, the rhythm of the light because there there are various zones in the park uh, starting from the small pathway to a gathering space a place for uh, old people to sit space for young children to to play so for all these uh, various zones uh, the sketch uh, really help us to establish a lighting vocabulary with which you compose the overall uh, scenario for the whole project and uh, uh, with various uh, perspectives uh, you you show and convey to the client that uh, this is the scale this is the look and feel of the 
the picture, this is what it will write, uh, this would be the level, etc. And uh, yeah. yeah, so that. Nirmit, each of your sketches are a different representation of the project and it shows different facet of the project as in like, you know, a perspective or a plan or a section that you make the viewer walk through the hierarchy. Can you explain the methodology behind this to make it as a design progression for you? Yeah, so um, actually uh, the first analysis is all about uh, how people will move, what will they see? Uh, what you want to show them uh, first, where you want to lead them. So, so this sort of series of questions are captured in an analysis called uh, the, light, the focal point uh, diagram. So where we establish various focal points, we say that, okay, you would move from here to there uh, with this kind of a rhythm of life. And so, so some of these focal points or some of these important restarts, there's a restart diagram also. So, uh, which where you indicate very quickly that, okay, uh, these are the main far vistas or near vistas or the mid vistas. And then with perspective, you try to uh, convey to the client that, okay, this is how uh, the space would look from a far vista. And, and that's what you sketch. Or similarly, this is the, uh, the near vista of a gathering space. And this is what you will see. And so you can establish that a sense of landmark and sense of intimacy in the space. Okay. Great, Nirmit. Next slide, please. Yeah, so this is uh, another uh, project where uh, the sketches here, they are like from my diary where I visit to the site. And uh, uh, this is actually, it was an old mill compound uh, which was broken down and then uh, the new uh, shop, uh, shopping complex or the shop, there were like 1500 shops which were put in uh, over here. And uh, this is in the old uh, part of the city of Ahmedabad. So uh, it is full of life, uh, very dense fabric. And uh, in the same mill uh, worker, just uh, they live opposite to this building. And now they are out of job and they are, uh, they have. Uh, so to various handcraft uh, 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 jobs, so they they would they are metal workers. They are uh, people who work with the waste, uh, like uh, um, the old uh, tires. They convert it into belts, which are used for industry and all that. So, uh, uh, so when when I first visited the site and, and the project was built, when it comes came to us, uh, it, it just helped to uh, make it a little bit more lively and branded. Uh, so, uh, so I was really inspired by these trees. And I said, okay, how how can we light it uh, beautifully and uh, uh, and make it a nice transition uh, between this new mega uh, shopping complex and the uh, residential neighborhood? So uh, the hawker's uh, cart, uh, uh, which you can often see on this road, so that really inspired that the the, the wheel of the hawker's cart. Uh, and and what if uh, it is around the tree and uh, uh, we can do this various mixing of colors with that the programmable light and all that and and then again uh, to see those long winding streets uh, in this big mega complex we said okay i mean how do we light the tree uh, well uh, differently and in a playful way so we said okay instead of the wall mounted or the pole let us just hang the lights and uh, 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 and light the streets. But then the challenge here is how, how, how will we fix this? Uh, uh, how, how will we maintain it? Or uh, how will we take care of the functional light and just the visual cue which guides you uh, through the street? So, so, uh, so these kind of questions uh, uh, were very quickly solved with site engineers and with a, with a fabricator on site that, okay, you can fix the down light around the ring with this kind of uh, metal fabrication. This is a hook system that we can use or to pull the cables and let us use a concrete pair of uh, pipe and just use a simple threaded rod and fix it with a turn buckle and, and uh, aircraft wire and voila, a new uh, custom luminary there. So, Yes, Nirmith, we are able to clearly see the progression of the project that you worked on the details, both small and big. 
meaning uh, the bigger conceptual picture to on the left where you see the smaller details in the project and uh, how did it help you to communicate and coordinate and progress this to to the realization uh, like i say that it's it's very interactive it's on site you are going with the client uh, and the architect to see what you can do and then quickly you see this uh, the the life how it is and and then you show your inspiration can the see I and mean, this is how uh, we are thinking to to light the trees and uh, and and it connects with them also very easily because they are seeing the same thing uh, uh, what we are seeing and then they see ah oh, yeah this can make uh, a nice luminaire and then the whole uh, after this concept of rural or initial just then you of course you do the much more detailed renders or the photo montages and uh, take it to the reality and same way for the details uh, the sketch is a very fast way to uh, to either communicate with an engineer in a section or or with a layman or a fabricator in a 3d that okay this is how you would fix to uh, things and this is how you would execute this is how the sequence would go so yeah, Great. It's, uh, it's very absolutely. communicative and fast medium than anything else. Absolutely, absolutely. Great work, Nirmit. And let's move on to the next slide, please. Yeah, so uh, this is the most recent uh, sketch, uh, I would say, uh, different, different uh, techniques. Uh, like I think Harshita also showed similar view where uh, you use digital stylus and uh, uh, so here, of course, yes, unlike in Harshita sketch, we didn't use uh, hand sketch and then convert it. This is done on a, uh, let's say, a sketch of 3D models line drawing, and then you, uh, you apply the light with digital sketch pen, and, uh, and wherever the light hits the material, you, you show that how that material would, uh, would be revealed with the real photograph of that material. And, and that's, I think, uh, the beauty of uh, compared to the hand sketch when you do the digital sketch, but you can use the actual material and the texture and uh, and show how they might look uh, eventually. And uh, also, you can have whatever colors that you want with this digital stylus. And uh, yeah, it's very uh, handy uh, tool nowadays with all the and it's very lightweight as such. When, so this is when you are sitting in a uh, uh, in a cafe or you are uh, traveling and you can very easily without uh, too many those compact box that we used to carry so now they are gone and you have this new uh, technique uh, so uh, this is something we enjoy nowadays. Yeah. Thank you, Nirmit. Very effective sketch illustrations. Uh, over to Zubair, our next uh, sketcher. Um, next slide, please. Zubair is a principal of Studio Plus based out of Bangalore. Uh, he's an architect by qualification. All yours, Zubair. Thank you, Kiran. Thank you, Anusha. Good evening, everyone. Today, I'll be presenting a slightly old project. This was uh, completed in 2012. Uh, this uh, project is very interesting because one, it was my very own uh, boutique, an experience center where a client could uh, walk in and experience and see uh, some exclusive Swarovski decorative lighting products in its own space. Uh, two, this was uh, also um, like like a like a like a like a project project which we designed uh, to make sure that you know the. The client has a touch and feel of the product. He can go very close to the uh, product and have actually look at it in its own space. Uh, so yeah, so this was about uh, 2,000 square feet, this whole uh, uh, lighting boutique. And uh, what we did was that uh, uh, we uh, kind of created different spaces for different luminaires where a client could uh, you know, walk through the entire experience. Uh, so we started off uh, with some, uh, some pencil sketches. Uh, we, we did some... Uh, uh, ideas of how the client could walk through the entire experience, uh, going through this entire space. Um, and then uh, we, we try to place the luminaires in, in a very strategic place where the client could actually uh, walk through that whole space while he stands right in front of it and also experience that 
the torque in its own space. Uh, so yeah, so um, like the sketch on the left, uh, if you could look at it, it's it's a cubicle, uh, which is uh, which is uh, a very uh, the cubicle was made in such a way that it was a very classical from the inside. It was very classical. So we had a wallpaper there. We had a nice Italian marble that was placed, and then we of course uh, placed the uh, luminaires. Uh, diagonally, the chandeliers are placed diagonally, so the person could walk through that entire space, experience that light, walk out, and then go to the next cubicle. So uh, this was uh, obviously uh, done through the entire uh, entire space. Space. Uh, well, uh, yeah. So um, the, uh, the then you go to the next cubicle, then you experience the lights in the next cubicle, and then walk through the, the other cubicle as well. Very yeah. expressive, um, Zubair. I think the idea of a cubicle and crystal have come together perfectly. I think um, they're self-expressive, so we can move on to the next slide. So yeah, so the next slide, uh, this uh, formed actually the core of the complete project. Uh, so this was a structure. Uh, we, we took the crystal as the inspiration, and then we, uh, we, we tried to see how the crystal, the facets of the crystal could be uh, could be uh, uh, you know used onto this entire structure. Uh, so we did a few uh, sketches uh, trying to uh, expand the crystal in in certain forms. Uh, then try mm. to uh, uh, try to see how it looks on a simulation. Went back to uh, uh, some sketching again. Uh, did uh, did uh, some uh, coloring uh, like you know try to see the forms, try to see the size. And then of course you know this was this whole the core of the structure was formed to actually uh, place these uh, crystal uh, starry, starry sky, crystal, you know, to get that starry sky effect. So uh, the fiber optic crystal from Swarovski was used in the space. Uh, so, you know, you, the, the client could walk their whole space and actually experience uh, that whole uh, product in its, in its own, you know, confined space. So it took a little bit of uh, back and forth sketching. We, we had to go back, uh, do some uh, walkthrough and just see how the, the form and the size was uh, coming up. Uh, then we had to actually again do a couple of AutoCAD drawings, go back to sketching again. Uh, like, you know, so there were quite a few uh, things that we had to do to actually get this form right and, you know, to have that experience through this whole space. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Your sketches show the evolution of form modeling and um, you elaborated on the technique as well. Thank you. Wonderful. Yes. Anusha, over to you. Thank you. Next, next slide, please. Yeah. So the uh, so the next uh, slide you see here. Uh, so again, the uh, we uh, we try to even uh, with the logo, uh, we try to uh, get this crystal form into the uh, into this whole uh, space. Uh, so the uh, the logo was formed uh, like it was designed specifically for this uh, for this space. So the inspiration was again the crystal. Then uh, there were the, the names of my children, my 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 daughter Hannah, and then my partners uh, partner Mihir and his uh, daughter Trisha. So we took the names of them, uh, we tied with the first names, and then we tied with the last name, and then we actually, the last name, the ARA was formed, and then we, we oh, created nice. this logo specifically for this purpose. And of course, you know, we, if you could see the picture on the right, uh, you could see uh, the, the lights uh, that sketched out uh, in the bottom image, and then the image on the top shows actually the product uh, displayed over there. So we wanted the client to actually experience light and darkness, and you know, we wanted the client to actually uh, stand in the dark and actually appreciate the light which was there. Usually, uh, you know, you 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 try to design the space, uh, you know, to make uh, to make uh, you know the lights to uh, to suit the space. But here, we actually what we did was we we took the lights as the inspiration. The lights were the main focus, and then we designed the space around it. Actually. Yeah. Very interesting take, Zubair. Very interesting take. And this is the time to move on to our next panelist, Purvi. Thank you, Anisha. Thank you, Kiran. Thanks. Thank you. Purvi is a lighting designer based in Bangalore, and she is the principal of lighting narrative. Over to you, Purvi. Please go ahead. Next slide, please. Hello, everybody. Right. Okay. Uh, so I'd just like to walk you through three slides of mine. It shows three different, very different techniques of uh, lighting, and also say from a very micro level to a macro level. Now you see this first slide shows two images. The one on top is um, a sketch version, and the one at the bottom is the realized image. Uh, this is a project in Dubai, which is a museum, and you see that's the gift shop. So let's say it would um, come under the retail category. 
Uh, Harshita also knows this project very well because it's a project we did together with our previous employer a couple of years ago. Um, so as you can see conceptually in terms of lighting, this is a very simplistic space. Um, the interior designer just had very basic um, uh, uh, wall paneling to store the objects and the ceiling was just rafters and the rest of it was absolutely white. Uh, so you can see in terms of the lighting, the approach was to illuminate the elements of importance, which is the objects that were on display, which were for sale. So you see there are uh, directional projectors from the ceiling that highlight each of these um, uh, objects very nicely. And as a second layer or a second lighting layer, there is an uh, indirect diffuse layer of line which captures the vertical surfaces, which also uh, gives you the perception of a brighter space. So, uh, yeah, so this image to the, on the top, it was the sketch, which uh, the medium is, uh, it, I sketched it on a wacker uh, directly on Photoshop, and the image that you see at the bottom is the done project. Great work, uh, Purvi. I think uh, this high pres uh, high contrast presentation technique. Uh, you did you choose this because of this particular project typology? Yeah, that's a very good question, Anusha. Um, I think the kind of sketches that you pick are number one. The urgency of the presentation. I think what what doesn't take so long because digital sketches take a while usually, depending on the intricacy and the complexity of. Uh, uh, the sketching uh, or what the the kind of client you're looking for, but yeah, up here it's absolutely simplistic. It wouldn't take more than three or four hours to create the sketch, but it pretty much does the job. I understand it's a very high contrast sketch, but it is uh, for a gift shop and it could work uh, for a more hospitality retail kind of uh, category. But it's not a kind of sketch I would go for. Say, for example an office project or you know um a, a more brightly like say a bank or a museum uh, for that matter museum yeah maybe i would yeah absolutely right uh, the next slide please right so while i was talking about, uh, about uh, you know uh, the sizes or, or let's say the categories of sketches this is um, um sketches at a very small scale a very detailed yeah. scale on to the left top, you'd see um, the sketch of a cove, which is uh, realized on the the images on the right side. There are two images of a uh, cove being realized on site. I think it's paramount uh, to sketch it for not only for your design um, uh, partners, but also for contractors on site, because the minute you put in the effect of light onto Photoshop, it, it it kind of relates immediately to say, okay, this is the output of light or this is the direction the light's going to go. Because though as a light designer, you think it's common sense, it's not so common often. Um, and the image to the left bottom is that of a sketch detail, uh, which shows the same. And the image onto the right bottom is a bad job. No? It's clearly um, not the most efficient cove lighting because there was not enough space and this is merely because of lack of communication with the contractors inside it's an absolute mistake yeah absolutely correct and i think uh, uh, the smaller uh, uh, minutest details in a project matter a lot and sketches yeah. solve a lot of problems next slide please <clears throat> right so this is a michelin star restaurant called the exo um, there's a restaurant in Spain and they were making one, there's one in London and they're making one in Dubai. And this is um, an image of the restaurant and you see there's, there's a lot happening. Now, first of all, there's a lot of colors. That's the first thing your eye sort of goes to. And um, uh, it's a very high contrast sketch again. Now, it's the same technique of uh, using a pen on the Wacom and realizing and, and sketching it on Photoshop. But let's talk a little bit about the concept of lighting, right? So as for the brief, they were quite open with lighting uh, because it's a Vicalista restaurant and it's also a bar. 
you see bang in the center of the sketch is what you see right at the back of the bar and you see a whole lot of fun dining uh, tables around it so in terms of um, uh, lighting it's very um, uh, controlled tight spot uh, tight beam uh, lighting and this is because the entire concept was to have a theatrical uh, you see people, sculptures, people dropping in from the ceiling. You see right at the back there's a projection of um, a, a person, of, of a persona uh, projected onto the wall. And he's also very theatrical. You have this colored suit and it's in a very dynamic position. So um, the approach to lighting was very tight beams on um, uh, tables. So the tables are exclusively captured with light. You see there is no spillover, at least that was the intent to have very tight beams. The circulation uh, pathways are not captured whatsoever because that was not the importance of um, uh, the restaurant, so to speak. So it was mostly uh, the horizontal tables that were captured and the highlight was onto all these theatrical features that are going around. You have these people dropping from the ceiling, you've got the bar counter, uh, and you've got an exposed ceiling of a whole lot of uh, ducting and conduiting exposed, so we thought, you know, let's use it, make it quite kitschy. Um, so yeah, that that was pretty much the concept. Uh, this is a very interesting one, Puri. I want you to elaborate. I think uh, the right word that you used was theatrical. I think the yeah. the take from that would be how, uh, what, what sort of a technique or a medium. Uh, uh, how this medium allowed you to capture this ambience precisely. Yeah, I think it's clear now this is a bit more complex um, uh, sketch than the other two that you've seen. Um, I would say it required, I, I use the technique of masking. If you were to ask me, technically in Photoshop, you mask. No? So your, your canvas is all black. Sometimes you use all white like You've seen the other very inspiring sketches of the presenters before me. Uh, they've used a white canvas. The difference is I've used a black canvas here and I've painted only where, let's say, you'd require light or you'd intend to bring out textures or colors. And so, for example, here uh, to the extreme right, you see this very, very glowing reddish texture on the vertical surface. Now, that is not colored light. No? That is just a red surface that the interior designer had indicated. And we just used a magenta filter to capture that wall um, and to enhance it a bit more. Yes, yes. Thanks, thanks, Purvi. Over to you, Kiran. Yeah. Thank you, Purvi. Very interesting, the masking technique and the black background and stuff. We'll try and see how we can also learn from this. Anyway, up next is Surbi, lighting designer based out of Mumbai. And the principal uh, is she's the principal at the Lighthouse. Uh, hi, Surbi, over to you. Uh, next slide, please. Hi, Kiran. Hi, Kiran. Hi, Kiran. How are you? Uh, thank you. Firstly, I would like to thank uh, IELD. Uh, for this amazing opportunity to showcase the uh, magical yet midas touch of our fingers and hands uh, in the form of sketches and um, uh, turned into reality or life projects. So uh, talking about uh, my first sketch, we as designers have faced this situation many times uh, during the schematic design phase itself that uh, there is a big elephant in the room uh, that nobody wants to talk about, especially in the consultants meeting. Uh, however, it's a very important aspect, uh, which is the minutest of the details, like the one uh, what you see on uh, the left hand side, the sketch uh, in the sketch. So uh, this is basically an integrated lighting system on uh, the front of the architecture facade where the projections in the facade and the folds of the canopies are illuminated uh, by linear LED light lines along the entire facade and uh, the canopies. The design of the concept uh, allows the installation of uh, the linear light lines running all the way from the plinth level up to the 22 floors, that is uh, around 80 meters of height. So uh, we had to do this quick sketch uh, in the all consultants meeting on the project site uh, while presenting our concept design. 
So uh, basically to make the installation detail understand to the design as well as the execution teams. And on the right, what you see is an image of uh, the mockup of the same. Uh, so it's a beautiful example of uh, God lies in the detail as uh, rightly quoted by the famous and the legendary architect, architect Mies van der Rohe. Nice, Surbi. Uh, for the facade application, how did you capture the scale aspect of, uh, of it and communicate it through the sketch that you made? So um, considering the scale aspect, uh, we had to make the whole system bespoke on the site, looking at the challenges of installation of such a tall source of light. So uh, we used innovative hybrid aluminium profiles due to the facade system and uh, an array of low uh, power LEDs embedded into the same um, with a high power supply. So we had to use a very reliable high power supply to light up the whole length of uh, 80 meters and uh, maintain uniform output throughout as well as the constant current at the same time. Uh, so to avoid any dark spots, uh, join the details as well as installation details were explained on spot at the site for clear communication to the execution and design teams and make the system whole the whole system viable understandable as well as get the concept right at the same time thanks would you like to progress to the next slide yes yes please next slide please So uh, in my second sketch, what you see here is a huge township uh, we did in the city of Taj Mahal, uh, the seven wonders of the world, where uh, we did the whole uh, landscape lighting, street, streetscape lighting, facade, as well as lighting for the villas. A project close to us uh, because it was a big breakthrough project for our practice to survive as well as grow. So uh, what you see here is the development of lighting design that started from ideas that turned into graphs and then sketches. So uh, use of varying strokes and colors uh, helped in distinguishing the lighting approach uh, applied to a particular element or on an object of interest. Uh, so highlighting its form, texture, color, as well as the depth. So uh, what you see at the top is basically our vision for the streetscape and the landscapes. And at the bottom two images is what you see our vision turned into reality. Nice. So I refer to the top left and the top right sketch of yours um, in this slide here. There are two different approaches I see there. What prompted to use the uh, you? What prompted you to use these two approaches for the same project? So uh, great question, Kiran. Uh, basically, it has got a story behind the same. On the left, uh, what you see is a quick sketch uh, done over the CAD elevation, what we received from the architects here, using colored mm -hmm. pencils and pen, and uh, then export it to Photoshop to create uh, final renders for the client in a presentable format to showcase the lighting scheme of the streetscape. And uh, then this helped us to grab or win the whole project of 60 acres township, which is close mm -hmm. to 24 hectares, as initially we were hired for a small part of the landscape and the facade lighting only. So uh, what you see in the right uh, on the sketch uh, may, is the sketch made after winning the whole project from the client, where we had uh, made more detailed pencil sketches on the 3D landscape views and then light rendered on the Photoshop. On Photoshop. So Prima Facia, the whole process taught us the importance of use of sketches on the real projects and mm -hmm. how can we use the art and science of sketching as a great tool uh, while developing and presenting our concepts. Nice. Third slide. Thank you. Thanks. Over to you, Anushan. So uh, the third uh, Sorry, can I go ahead with my third sketch? Yes, please. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Anisha. Uh, so this is basically a bar in the cafe in the beautiful foothills of Himalayas. 
And what makes us happy and glad, glad to showcase and talk about this boutique space is that uh, we had conceptualized and sketched, uh, what we had conceptualized and sketched at the initial design phase in close conjunction with the interior design team, our concept turned into reality the way it was, and it was well executed, though the project had a very high gestation period. So it's a great example of uh, good teamwork that uh, became the talk of the town in itself. And uh, as a design concept, uh, we wanted to create a striking contrast uh, between the subtle backdrop and the front so that uh, so we added colors to the structure above and color shading portable elements like the bar stools and lanterns on each and every table. And for sketching, uh, we use multiple mediums here like pencils, felt pens, and pastel. And no computer tools at all, only hand sketch. So uh, lastly, forms, texture, color, depth combined together created a light art or I would say a painting, a light painting. And eye-catching scenery brought to life through thoughtful lighting design. Thank you. Thank a you, great vibrant, Yeah, great vibrant presentation survey and we got to see three different contexts in very interesting uh, perspective. Now, this is the time to move on to our next presenter, Shaili. And Shaili is a lighting designer based in Rajkot and she heads her own interior and lighting design practice. Over to you, Shaili. Next slide, please. Very good evening. Shai, Hi, please. Anusha. Hi, Kiran. Hi. 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 Yeah, yeah. Now you're audible. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Audible, yeah. Uh, very good evening, Anusha. Hi, uh, Kiran. I would like you to tell you guys in my three slides. Um, okay. So, this is a dining unit for a residential interior. And uh, this sketch was done in a few seconds on the wall on a site to explain the detailing to the carpenter and the electrician, um, the connection between the plywood and the profile to achieve this low budget shelving detail. The idea was to hide the profile and only show the glass and the light coming out of glass edge. I couldn't, uh, unfortunately, I, could, I tried my level best, but I couldn't capture the exact uh, result achieved uh, with this and uh, if um, in, in the photograph it shows like this but in re reality it is only the light coming out of the edge so um, can we go yeah. to the next thing? yeah very uh, very interesting take uh, Shaili because this the sketch shows very clearly that your background is interior design because you sketch with materials in mind thicknesses in mind and uh, that helps with the communication to the project team right to execute. Yeah. I have this habit of sketching it on the wall so it I mean it's fun <laughs> with, with all the people around me it, it is always a good thing but then, more real. It, and then uh, take it to Photoshop to give it to staff to do, do it on the AutoCAD uh, detail drawings. So this is the uh, next project, and uh, this is a bigger um, uh, residential project. And the heart of the space is this square cube, and uh, which is a connecting um, uh, uh, a volume between the two towers. So. Um, the um this i wanted a result which highlights only uh, the square cube so the lead light was attached with the framing structure of the facade glass and uh, this was again a quick sketch done and then taken to photoshop to show more desired effects yeah this uh, i think detail is very self explanatory and uh, uh, it's it may seem simple in the sketch but it it is a a, a task to execute this next slide please okay so coming to the street lighting in a portuguese street in Leave island with portuguese architecture and multicolor houses uh, bright fisherman houses um, this sketch is done from a photo 
for a conceptual presentation. Then the photo and the sketch were merged in the Photoshop. And then the heads of the catenary systems uh, were changed as per everyday light, um, as per the festive light or the everyday uh, routine lights. So this was only done for a conceptual presentation. So the focus was more on a beautiful image rather than um, like a detailing digital, uh, image. So this was one of the photograph which was like um, um, a part of the presentation. Can you please elaborate on the medium that you used here to capture this ambience so very so precisely here? Uh, there I, I took a picture of the image, uh, like the street when I was in there. And then I, I um, did a tracing of that uh, image. And then I took both uh, in, the, in the Photoshop and merged both together. And uh, I played with the opacity and the colors. Because all the houses were very colorful. So they had their own colors. So it is like a mixed media. Um, um, yeah. Thanks for the great presentation, nice. uh, Shaili. And uh, now next slide, please. We move on. Thank you. Thank you so much. We would like to thank our sponsors, Balika and Lazor, for this ILD Lighting Saturdays 2020 Lighting Sketches event. The next event is Lighting Superstars on Diwali. 14th of November 2020. Do follow us on Facebook and Instagram pages of ILD and ILD India chapter to stay tuned. Next slide, please. Uh, one of our sponsor, Hussein, who is the principal of Lazor, is going to be presenting his sketches from a manufacturer's perspective. Over to you, Hussein. Good evening. Next slide, please. Good evening, Kiran. Thanks, Anusha. Uh, so as a manufacturer, uh, we use sketching for a variety of applications, right from uh, explaining a concept uh, design idea to a consultant or a client or to uh, explain a, a installation process to a site technician or even in an entire uh, product development process. So we use sketching for a, uh, for a lot of different applications uh, in our office. Uh, today I pulled up uh, three sketches from uh, different applications. Uh, I do a bit of sketching myself, but uh, these sketches are done uh, by Minakshi and Shanaya from our uh, design team. So uh, starting with this first uh, slide that you see on the screen. Now this is where uh, the landscape consultant uh, had an idea where he wanted a pole light, which is which uh, which it looked like a flower sort of uh, a center piece of attraction. And uh, a lot of design ideas were exchanged and uh, uh, finally this sketch was uh, made and presented to him and uh, he really like the idea when how and this is an example of how a, a, a sketch translates into a shop drawing which you see on the right hand side and eventually into a final beautiful pole light product a custom made pole light product so this is this is uh, really interesting as to how uh, a design idea can be translated into a final product uh, we move on to the next uh, project slide Yeah, so uh, this is a, a dome installation uh, 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 where the idea, of course, was to light up the entire dome. Uh, the right hand side top image that you see is how the product was installed when in the light fixture was fixed very close to the uh, uh, body of the dome, whereby it was not highlighting the entire dome structure. Now, this the the, uh, the side team was not willing to uh, make the changes because the scaffolding was removed and everything was done. Uh, eventually, we ended up doing this sketch and explaining them that this is what the lighting consultant wants. I mean, this is the effect that the lighting consultant wants. And uh, this kind of really helped them understand the concept and they uh, readily agreed to do the necessary changes. And the bottom image that you see is actually the final output that was achieved. So a sketch uh, to assist the site team in understanding the current installation method, uh, you could say. Uh, we move on to the next slide. This is an interesting one. Uh, this is a driveway which leads to a, a hotel uh, lobby uh, a drop off canopy. So uh, this is where the landscape consultant and the client both were very clean, uh, clear that they didn't want to spend too much money on this and they were happy to uh, put up some 
uplighters in the bushes. Uh, whereas the consultant really wanted this linear uh, approach uh, throughout the driveway. And uh, uh, she, I mean, we, we got together and we put up this sketch in front of the client and the uh, landscape uh, consultant. And they both readily agreed when they saw this, that this is, yeah, we should go ahead with this. And finally, it was approved. And uh, on the left hand side, you see the actual installation that has uh, come out. So, uh, I mean, we used, uh, we used to use a white and I'm coming back to how, what are the techniques that are used in the sketches. Uh, so we used to use a normal white background and a pencil sketch, which is, which you still do in a lot of cases, but then, uh, my, my student at Wismar, uh, Professor Nathan taught us one technique where we use a cartridge black paper and an oil uh, pencil to uh, come up with uh, very good I, uh, design ideas where you can uh, communicate the lighting effect in a very effective way. So this is what we have been using at our office uh, ever since. Uh, that's it from my side, Anusha Kiran. Up, over to you. Thank you, Hussein, for sharing your sketch techniques. I'm sure we all will benefit out of it. Uh, viewers, with this, we finish our round of presentations. Congratulations, guys. And here are the winners. Please turn your cameras on as, as I call your names out. Um, in third place, we have Harshita, Zubair, and Colby. Do we have a tie there, Joe? There was a three-way tie for third place. Oh, oh wow. wow. Okay. That's great. That's so, so, so do we have that many cameras? Yes, yes. Purvi and Harshita, please uh, turn on your camera. Harshita, Zubair, and Purvi. Congratulations, guys. Amazing work. Thanks for sharing. Um, Thank you. Second place. Second place goes to Nirmit. Nirmit, congratulations. Can we have you on the screen? Congratulations, Nirmit. Um, any guesses who the first place is? Who's taking the first place? Congratulations, Swati. You have the first place. Congratulations Amazing. to all of you. Swati, turn on your camera, everybody. Please. I think Harshita has already left. Has she? Swati, are you there? Yes, Swati. Yes. Yes. Congratulations, guys. You guys are the winners. <laughs> Anyway, we thank Jelly and Joe for all the technical support. Uh, Dr. Amar Deep Dukar for the direction, IALD India members for all your love and support, and you viewers for your time. We request you to please stay till the end of the event. Anusha, Thanks, over to you. Thanks, Kiran. Now we'd like to say something about the Indian festivals in October. Navratri is a Hindu festival that spans nine nights and is celebrated every year in the autumn. It's a cultural festival that brings people together socially. So ILT lighting events have become a mode of celebrating Indian festivals. Joe, next slide, please. Anusha, can we have the um, winners turn off their cameras? Thank you guys once again. Now we have a facade installation video by Sushant called Business Park Ahmedabad. Thank you, Sushant, for the video. Thank you all for joining in. This is Anusha and Kiran signing off. Have a great day and a wonderful rest of the year. Bye. Have a great evening, guys.